And actually, this isn't uh, just um, a Wales or a UK issue. This is something that people have been thinking they've got sorted all the world over, so don't think that you're particularly suffering here. Because in some say, situations, people say, oh, um, it's great, they've got it all sorted in Australia or in America or whatever. Well, I can tell you I've worked in these places and actually it isn't as, as great as they might make out. So this was some work I was working with the councils out in, in Sydney. Uh, because for 15 miles either side of, of the, the, the centre of Sydney, there is no dog access to any of those beaches at any time. Uh, and they think, oh yeah, that's, that's great and that's brilliant and this sort of thing. And you, you would speak to the councils and one council would say, oh, um, yeah, we've got this ban because uh, in spring, bearing in mind that's a different time of year to, to us being uh, Southern Hemisphere, uh, the fairy penguins come out and they bury the eggs on the beach and then they need to come back to them and get the chicks. Absolutely, that's fine, although that, that isn't all year round. Uh, but then you speak to another council and they would say, ah, well, uh, we think we'll get more attacks by sharks uh, if the dogs are walking on the beach. And but where's the evidence for that? Uh, no, but they're just a particular perception. But, you know, that's the situation it was. But then actually I went and looked on these beaches and there's dogs on them. And so I spoke to some of the dog walkers and said, you know, what, what's going on here? And they would say, well, actually, there's nowhere for us to go. Uh, we want to be able to walk on the beach somewhere and cool our dogs off. And we're not given a choice, so we just go to the one that's nearest. And we just put aside $200 a year to pay the fines when we get caught because we know actually there's only one dog warden trying to deal with this whole area and they're unlikely to catch us. So the councils thought it was working, but in essence it wasn't, because if they'd said actually go to this place where the fairy penguins aren't nesting, the dog owners would have done that. But because it wasn't managed, there was a kind of issue of denial, and so it, would, it was still happening. Similarly in San Francisco, so this is a, a city where you've got more dogs than people, and also because it's like a peninsula, uh, it's very difficult for people to spread out into other areas. And here we have an issue where the city council, who runs all the, all the parks and urban green spaces, does, isn't working particularly well in a joined up way with the National Park Service who, who manage the, the coastal zone ar around the, the sea. So one puts more restrictions on dogs, that pushes people into the other area, and then they think, oh, we've got more of a problem, so we'll put more restrictions on, and it's just intensified the problem. So this is one of the few dog uh, uh, off-lead areas around San Francisco now at Fort Funston. Uh, you can see there should be all nice June vegetation here, but it's just all gone. The stink of the dog urine was terrible. I mean, if you've got dogs, you get kind of used to, to smells and stuff, a bit like you, if you've got a young child. Uh, but this just was not a nice place. Um, and even though their rangers can go out to green spaces and gun, you know, with guns and stuff, and you know, they can be a bit more gung-ho and stuff, you were still finding that people didn't want to go here and they were actually going to the wildlife areas and stuff because this was just so unpleasant because you got more dog-on-dog -dog attacks. It was, just, it was just like the worst possible experience. So people are starting to thinking, again, this is all over the world, not just here. So how do we manage this demand? So here we've got, this is in Canada. So this is Banff National Park. And unlike the national parks we have in, here in Wales, where actually people are, are living and working in there uh, because it's part of their livelihood, and in fact, it's that land management by farmers and other people that's made the areas as, as beautiful as they are. Um, here, because most of the national parks are state-owned, they can have whatever rules they want, really. And there was a rule here that actually, if you come to this national park, your dogs are on a lead all the time, everywhere, period. And people thought, yeah, that's great, and it's clear and consistent. But actually, it didn't work, because there's places like uh, Banff Town Site, where people actually live in the national park, and they wanted to walk their dogs somewhere. Uh, and they wanted off-lead access, and so they would tend to go to places outside the town, let their dogs off-lead, even though there was the, the potential that their dog would get eaten by a bear or chased by a coyote and killed, but they, they were very motivated for that. So again, it wasn't really working. So what happened a couple of years ago, they decided we need to change our policy. So actually they produced some fenced-in areas, some big fenced-in areas of forest, um, where people and said, okay, here's a place where you can go and take off-lead access. And because there was less hassle, the dog owners wanted to do it. They didn't want conflict. They didn't want to be looking over their shoulder. And actually, the, the, the ironic thing about these is that uh, what you get in there is um, coyotes, and they'll try and get pet dogs to chase them, and they'll, they'll lure them back into the, the bush so that all the other coyotes can pounce on the dogs and kill them uh, and eat them. Now, some of you may think that's a really good management um, approach to have in the Vale of Glamorgan and reintroduce coyotes and sort out your dog problem. Um, but actually the fencing was actually keeping the dogs safe from the coyotes who as you can see were very very cheeky I wasn't that far away from it and this coyote 
is right up to the fence eyeing up a Labrador as its you know, starter for the day or something like that. But this whole point that you, you can think it's working, but actually dog owners are very motivated to take access, and off-lead access uh, is, quite, is very important to most of them. So people are now saying, actually, how do we manage this and get out of the denial that actually by just saying on-lead everywhere, as they tried to do here, didn't work. And we know that that can work. So here's some work that was done uh, by a wildlife trust down at Greenham Common in Wiltshire. Um, as you probably remember, some of them, Greenham Common was where there were nuclear warheads were stored when the American Air Force was here. So there was nobody on there. Um, but when the Americans pulled out, there was a lot of public pressure to actually open that up to the public again, uh, both for dog walking, but also it was a great site for, for, um, uh, for wildlife. So they did some work and introduced a zoning scheme there to be really clear about you know, the areas that were sensitive for wildlife and the areas that weren't as sensitive to try and accommodate everybody. And some of the studies that, that they did here was actually they found that nearly 80% of people, the dog was making them visit the site, you know, dog walking was important. 81% um, at least weekly, quite, I think it was about 40% were coming every day uh, from the nearby towns. Uh, and 95% of people were saying, we're not expecting to go everywhere. We just want to know somewhere where we can be made welcome and we can seek what we want. But we're not saying we want dogs to go into every pond or to be off lead everywhere. And actually they were saying, we're actually happy with some no dogs areas too. But we're just not given uh, an informed choice. Uh, and so actually what they did here, and we'll look at this later, is actually use a traffic light system which was clear about where people either were not to go with their dogs or ponds where dogs weren't to go in, but also being positive about this area is okay because often we just see that the negative signs. So again, this was work that was done by Wildlife Trust, um, uh, which they've happily shared with me. So, you know, so again, getting across that point that nobody's saying that it, we're after a, a dog free-for-all, no more than people are saying want a total ban on dogs. It's about how do we manage that demand. 